Hi guys, this is Doc Z in the house. Hopefully this message finds you well. I greet you with namaste. Mm. Hotepu, what I do, how you doing? I bring you greetings from my yard. The beautiful flower wall, it's coming along. I want to give you guys a change of scenery, a change of view, life all around me. I hope you can feel it. I hope you can see it. <sighs> Happy Sunday, guys. Another Sunday, I decided to do something different. I want to get out of nature, do a video. So today I'm creating a video, not readings. It's those questions that you have. I have 10, or five, five, 10, 10 top 10 questions that I get. Our tarot is a divinatory healing art. Question number one, what is tarot? People have all types of misunderstandings about what tarot is. Well, tarot is a divinatory tool. It is a system, a tool for inquiring of the Lord. This is similar to what the Old Testament calls inquiring of the Lord. Similarly, in the Old Testament, the high priests used tools, what they call the Urm and the Thunum. And the Urm and the Thunum in the Old Testament, in Old Judeo question tradition, they inquired of the Lord. So they would ask questions similar to, shall I go into battle? Will I be victorious? These were yes or no inquiries and they used tools the Old Testament to inquire, ask questions of God. So tarot is not that dissimilar. It's just a different tool used to ask questions, ask questions of God. So that's what tarot is. It's a tool to inquire of God. Second question, from where does the tarot come from? Well, that's an interesting question and it is up for debate. I would like to say that I believe that the tarot is the most ancient system of divination and that this is, I believe personally, that it originated in Africa and some argue the region of Egypt, or what I call ancient Kemet. And it's not a far fetch stretch to believe that this form of divination originated, had its beginnings in ancient Africa, in ancient Kemet. But it, made a, it had a revitalization or resurgence in I believe the 1500s where they create the, the Tarochi or Visconti decks. They set the precedent and created what we call modern day playing cards. We have our clubs, our spades, our hearts, um, and diamonds, which are similar to the tarot, which is swords and pentacles and cups and wands. So, yeah, those card players out there, you could be engaging in divination and you're not even know it. I wonder what's in your hand. So, question number three asks, what forces or what force is responding to your tarot inquiry? What force, what forces are responding to the tarot inquiry? Well, for me, I believe that there is only one source and one power in the universe, the God, the, Lord, the Omnipotent. From that force, from that source, comes all things. Now, I do incorporate traditional African practices in my spiritual practice. 
So I work with the O-ring shop. Oshun is my mother, the goddess of the sweet waters. Yemeya is my mother. Oloku is my father. Orumela is my father. I work and I call upon the energies that are responsible for engaging in revealing the mysteries, revealing, revealing secrets, that which is beneath. So it's only fair and only wise and reasonable that as I, as a student of the healing arts and a student of these energies, I call them to help support me. I engage my work uh, and intercede on behalf of my clients or other clients. Mm -hmm. So, the only force and source that I use is God, the good omnipotent, and from that energy, all things come. And that's the Orisha, our angels, our guides, our team of spiritual, non corporeal beings that are surrounding us and supporting us as we transition through this human experience. So an example of that would be our ancestors. They are constantly available at the ready to support us as we transition through this experience, through this human experience. And so I call upon those energies to help support me as I inquire. And those energies help me interpret and bring the message forth. So then today there is only one source. From that source, all things. So I pray to that source and I acknowledge the all things that come from that source. Makes sense? Makes sense to me. Question number four. Hmm, interesting. This is a question that I get all the time too. I was taught that divination was against God. And it is of the devil or evil. Well, I would beg to differ. I disagree with that notion. Um, but I do agree that you most likely were taught that because I was taught that growing up. I grew up in a very religious household. I went to a very conservative church growing up until I found the light and found a um, very progressive and affirming denomination in my, as I began to grow. I've been I've experienced some um, different perspectives, but at the end of the day there's only one source and one power in the So back to this particular question. What are, what are my thoughts about this? Well I don't believe that tarot is evil, I don't believe that tarot is of the devil, I don't believe that the God is the source of all things and so this is exists to support There are religious systems such as Christianity that will teach you and encourage you that it is a, that is not of God. But I find it uh, interesting that in, even in the Old Testament Bible that they did divination and inquired of God. This is just a different system, uh, but the goal is the same: to inquire of God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think. Whether it's good or bad, it all depends on the perspective and the intention. And that will be my answer. It all depends on the perspective and the intention and the motivation behind those engaging uh, this tool. If your heart is pure and you have your intentions are of a positive vibration, uh, then I think you're in alignment with source energy. Your intentions are of a darker vibration. Um, I think it's fair to say that um, source energy um, would not necessarily be supportive of that type of behavior. At the end of the day, there is only power, and that power has spectrums, and how you choose to use that power matter of choice. You can, choose, you can choose good, you can choose evil. That's really what it is. It's a matter of choice and intention. 
but at the end of the day, things can be for God, and things can be against God. It's just what's in your heart and the choices that you make. What questions can I ask of the tarot? Well, you can ask any type of questions. You can ask questions about relationships. You can ask questions questions about career. You can ask questions um, related to things that occurred to you in the past. You can ask questions about potential future outcomes. The sky's the limit. You just have to be open and receptive to the answer that you receive. What is the key to having a successful reading? The key is vulnerability. The key is being open, honest, and receptive to the experience. If you show up in that spirit, then I think it's fair to say that that bodes well for a beneficial, rewarding um, experience. Another question that I get all the time is, how am I able to interpret what is being presented to me? Well, the key is trusting your intuition, surrendering to the higher consciousness. Letting the ego kind of go out the way, get out the back door, kind of like subside, that's the right word. Let it subside and let your higher consciousness, let your, your, your true self, that source energy, allowing that to allow you to connect and to interpret and to trust your feelings. You know, I'm very empathic, so I use my emotions that I get to further allow me to do my interpretation. So, it's, some people call it clairsentience, or I use my intuition, I use my clairsentience to feel the energies that are coming through the cards, but also the energy that's coming from the person of the card that I'm talking to. So, a combination of my ability to interpret the meaning of the card with my ability to connect with the feeling of the current and be able to tie all those things together to create Hopefully that is And uh, the second thing that I get all the time from clients is, um, well, whenever I do a reading, um, I have several questions that I want to inquire about, but I, I keep getting the same cards over and over and over and over and over again. Well. The reality is, if you're getting the same cards over and over and over again, that means you need to get the message. Um, and you don't uh, feel like there's something wrong or, uh, or something's broken. Nothing's broken. Everything's working right. You just have to trust the message you're getting and to understand that Spirit is saying, well, we're not moving on past this point until you are understanding of, of the communications that I'm trying to get you to understand. We often want to go jump ahead and do other things in life when we're not ready for it. Spirit is saying, hold, hold, hold off here. We're not, I'm not, you're not moving and I'm not addressing anything else that you're talking about because that's not what you need to be talking about. That's not what you need to be asking about. And so this is, this is just, uh, I guess like a fail safe. It's like Spirit saying, sending you confirmations over and over and over again to your frustration but also to your benefit and to your elevation all right so that's the answer to that question the next question is well i get this all the time i'm so nervous you know i'm scared what if something comes up that i don't want to see oh my god what if i get the death card the death card i'm gonna die no it's nothing like that <laughs> i mean usually the death is just the ending it, it, it basically pretends something has come to an end. There is uh, closure. Um, it usually, you know, speaks to our ability to grow. It speaks to our rebirth as a result of something that was not serving us well uh, no longer being in existence before. And I look forward to that. You know, if something's not long, no longer serving me well, there's nothing to be afraid of, right? Right. Last question, final question. What's the immediate impact of a tail reading on my life experience? So 
what can be the immediate impact of tarot on your life experience? Well, I believe that tarot produces a mirror. It produces a mirror of the soul. It speaks to you in, in ways that puts on display the conscious mind and what lies in, in the subconscious mind that has yet to be spoken. It is a wonderful tool for Confirming things, it, 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 it lays bare our internal struggles and it presents to us a most likely outcome. But not only does it present to us a most likely outcome, it shows us the energies that have been present and persistent that have brought us to this point. And it offers points of clarity that lead to paths of illumination. And those paths of illumination can give a sense of liberation. Because once you are open enough to receive the guidance and honest enough to admit is true, then you can begin to do the necessary work within you and for you to potentially shift an outcome to a different direction, or at least be prepared for the inevitable, right? So this is a wonderful tool that allows you to see the truth have to be ready and it's a continuous work you will often ask well how, how often should I uh, do a tarot practice well it's a practice so that means something that you should put sincere committed effort into and so that spells and speaks to me of routine so I'll create more videos on that in terms of what a tarot practice looks like what does a routine look like how can you use the tarot as a tool on a daily basis for your own um, alignment and uh, an effort to keep you grounded? Okay, so 10 top questions about tarot. I hope it was helpful and illuminating. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel at ZWeaver3185. You can find me under Zachary D. Weaver. You can also follow me on Instagram at Doxy Tarot, and you can find me on Facebook under Doxy That Tarot Teddy Bear. All right, make sure you pick up a copy of my new book, Tarot and the Healing Arts, on Amazon. And download it on Kindle as a new book. Super excited! And once you read, make sure you leave a review. All right, love, like, share, send me out there. All right, take care.